Welcome back tubers. Today we have a common problem. Solar products, handy little devices, where they cheap out on the final few bits that would make them really something. Usually the battery and the total lack of any charge control. So this thing was a nice light, you know, motion activated, uh, daylight sensitive flood LED here and uh, completely stopped working in pretty short order. So I figured it's probably got a cheap battery in it. So I open it up and sure enough, here you go. Nickel metal hydride double A's. 900 milliamp hour, not too high of capacity, and I'm sure not that great of quality, and no charge control at all. So, when this low capacity battery gets charged all the way up and the sun's still out, it's just sitting around at too high of a voltage. So, with this all stuffed in here as it goes normally, and there's this piece there, the battery fits in this slot right there. So they set to uh, looking around the shop to figure out what I had that would fit in that space and do the same job. It turns out 18650s, the cell of the laptop and the power tool, will just fit in here. Not in this insert piece here, but we'll carve that out of the way. And then about the appropriate voltage. Well, two of these in series these are 3.6 volt nominal, 4.2 maximum, and fully charged. So it's a little bit higher voltage than this here. This is rated 6 volts. That's nominal. This would be 7.2 nominal. So it would be just over a volt higher most of the time when operating the light. Uh, oftentimes you can get away with a difference like that. I figure it's worth a try here. And uh, at their maximum voltage, when it comes to charging, they're even closer together, actually. These uh, nickel metal hydrides will charge around 1.5 or 1.6 even per cell. They're so at 7.5 or 8 volts there, whereas this wants a maximum of 8.4. Getting pretty close there. And so when using cells from an old battery, this came from a laptop, you don't just grab the first two and stick them together, though that turns out to be what I did. Testing is required. Firstly, check uh, the voltage of the cells you're looking at using as you find them. If they're stone dead when you find them, that's probably not a good sign. So you want to find a pair that have a similar voltage. And these first two I grabbed had, I believe, 2.24 and 2.44, something like that. Pretty similar and a pretty healthy voltage for something that's been just sitting around forever. And so you charge them up and then measure them. And so when I discharge those cells one at a time with my handy device here, I get this graph. I've never seen two lines so close together. So it showed that those 2.6 amp hour cells still held a 2 amp hour charge and that they would work perfectly together. And I went over to the spot welder and assembled them. There you can see the welds. So I attached the leads from the old battery pack there and plugged it into the light and it worked quite well again.
And then for the matter of charge control, I decided to do a test. Since we're raising the voltage here a bit above the battery that was there before, when you raise the voltage that a uh, solar panel like this is operating at, the amount of power it can provide goes down, since this was designed for charging 6 volt batteries. I figured it just might protect itself well enough. Done this sort of thing with a similar light before, I think it used the same panel, but it ran on one of these 6 volt sealed lead acid batteries that are very popular for backup lighting and alarm systems and such. And so of course it came with a cheap one and it didn't last very long but also because it didn't have charge control. These usually list the voltage that they would like to be charged at and of course no more than that and when I got a new battery and popped it into that one and put it in the sun for testing the voltage continued well above what that one wanted, which I believe was 7.35. It continued up to 8.5 or whatever and, uh, until I stopped it. Meaning, so, you know, when this is fully charged, it's just sitting there cooking. So what I did for that one, it's a very simple thing to do. They have these buck converters for about a dollar a piece that are really handy. Of course, you'll lose a little bit of charging efficiency here, but you can set the output voltage with this screw. So no matter the input voltage, the output will always operate at that voltage or lower. light has been working well for several months now. So after being out here for a few hours in blazing sun, after being fully charged in the first place, we're running just a little bit high here of what these cells should receive, which would be 8.4 volts. 8.67. I think we'll get away with this. I don't think it's worth installing charge control over. This isn't going to happen very often either. As the battery will spend most of the day discharged working its way up to this. With the testing done, it's time to carve this out of the way. But yes, utility knife works wonderfully for that. Perfect. There it is. Better than new. There is just another one of those matters that you have to take into your own hands. So if you like this video and you can't wait to see what will break next, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.